Hey guys, Shovel B. We're back with another Chestnut V deck. Big fan of this card. It's got a very interesting ability in Needle Line. So if your Chestnut V is in the active and it gets attacked by one of your opponent's Pokemon, we're going to put three damage counters on the Pokemon that attacked it. It does scale up, so as long as we've got four Chestnuts in play, we're dealing 120 damage back into them when they're hitting us. Which is kind of funny, because if they're not knocking us out, we're effectively half hitting them, and then we follow up with Touchdown, doing 130 damage, healing 30 off this Pokemon, it's a pretty silly combo. Since it's a basic, we can also give it Cape of Toughness, increasing its HP from 230 up to 280. And since the attack cost has a colorless energy in it, just one though, we can be paying it with V-Guard energy, making it so this takes 30 less damage from V Pokemon, effectively bringing the HP all the way up to 310 up against Vs. You're not normally seeing that on basics, so it can take people by surprise and just makes it a very bulky and difficult to deal with Pokemon while only giving up two prizes. And sometimes you're taking prizes when you're getting hit. Other way we can be setting up to get knockouts when it's not even our turn is by attaching Earthen Sealstone to this. So with Earthen Sealstone, it's going to count as our V-Star power and gives it the attack Star Gravity. Once per game, you get to put damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon V until they've only got 100 HP remaining. We've got four Chestnuts in play. That means they hit us, they take 128 damage, they've only got 100 health, we're getting a knockout, maybe they're taking a knockout too, that's fine. We just put another Chestnut in the active, then swing for 130 with touchdown into one of their other guys that's down to 100 health, take some more prizes, they swing into us again, get damaged again. It's pretty busted, and definitely takes people by surprise. It's a very fun deck to be able to pull off, and when you get that combo, it's very satisfying. Make sure that we can get set up for that energy it costs, though. Being two grass and a colorless can be a little bit awkward. We've got one copy of Leafy on V. So with greening cells, once during your turn, you can search your deck for a grass energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon. It does end your turn, but if you're using this on your first turn going first, you're not able to attack, you're not able to use a supporter anyways, so we just go attach, greening cells, Next turn, attach another energy. Chestnut can start swinging using Earthen Sealstone or using Touchdown. It's just a very effective way to get set up very quickly. For another attacker, we do have Drapion V. Since Mew VMAX is running Fusion Strike energy, prevents abilities from affecting Mew. So when they hit Chestnut, they're not going to take damage counter. So we need something to bypass that. Drapion's attack is going to cost one colorless energy less for each Rapid Strike, Single Strike, or Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. So up against Mew, we're able to attack for free. Hitting it for weakness, we're doing 380 damage. It's pretty busted. Does also help out since it's another way to use Earthen and Sealstone. So if our opponent's running a bunch of Sobbles or even up against Mew, use that. Put them down to 100 HP remaining on all of their guys, and then Chestnut can be swinging for easy knockouts as well. It's pretty effective. To make sure that Chestnut's staying alive, we've got one copy of Radiant Serena, just healing off some damage each turn, and then we've also got one copy of Pukamuku, since it combos really nicely with Arita. Arita lets you look through your deck for an item card and a water Pokemon, get any item we need, maybe our Cape of Toughness or Earthen Sealstone, get Pukamuku for a bit of draw support, it's a nice combo. To set up our bench really quickly, we've got four copies of Battle VIP Pass and four Quick Balls, and since we are only running basic Pokemon, for Switch cards we've got four copies of Switching Cart to Switch, and one air balloon. So switching cart's another way we can heal damage off chestnut. And since we are going to be setting up with Gardenia's Vigor as well, lets you draw two cards and attach two grass energy from your hand. Only do a bench Pokemon can be a little bit tricky, so that's why we've got so many switching options in this deck. For some other supporters, we've got one copy of Clara, so if our chestnuts are getting knocked out early, we can get them back, straight into our hand, get going again, and one copy of Thornton. So that if we've got Leafy on out early game, it set up a chestnut V, but now it's just sitting on the bench, not really doing much for us. Our opponent can gust it up, knock it out, and not take damage counters. We don't want that. So if a chestnut gets knocked out, we're just gonna use Thornton and turn that Leafy on back into a chestnut and just make it so we're putting more damage counters out. It's uh, pretty funny. For some Gust, we've got Serena, which also doubles as draw support. And then for our energy lineup, we're looking at two copies of V-Guard energy and 10 basic grass energy. That's a deck list. It's pretty straightforward and pretty crazy. It works really well. You get to get some pretty fun knockouts and pull off some nutty combos. If you like it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you like shenanigans like this. Also, if you're finding it hard to find time to make good food and find time for gaming, why not try out HelloFresh? They're sponsoring this video, there'll be a link in the description down below, and if you follow it, it helps out the channel quite a bit. But let's jump on ladder and see how we go with this tonight. Is there an item card you hope comes out in the new sets, like a new mechanic you would want to see? I want them to bring back, similar to how we had for Sil Valley GX, there was like the item card, or the tool cards you applied to it to make it a different type. I want them to do that as the terrestrializing, the terror types. 
Like I'd like them to do that so that every deck can have an option to be like, hey, I have a very hard loss to, like for example, Lugia having a hard L to Lightning type decks or Mew having a hard L to um, Drapion. So if there was Terra types to just change it. So it's like, hey, you're now fighting type. You're you hit weakness into dark and you're no longer weak to dark. You're weak to, your weakness becomes like psychic or something like that. I think that would be a really cool mechanic. Let's play that. Uh, quick ball away grass energy. We've got training court to get it right back. We'll just get another chestnut. Or we get leafy on. We get Leafy on. Yeah. Get Leafy on, accelerate out. Next turn we attach for turn, we can start attacking. We've got switching cards, so if they do try and like escape rope stall us, we just get around it. How's Dragapult? The Dragapult was alright. I think we only did a game or two with it. We can revisit that one too. There was just a lot of really cool concepts you guys threw my way, and it was like, yeah, we'll find ways to make these work. And it's. Just trying to find the most optimized way for it. Going back towards more so like two video uploads a week and just making sure the deck lists are refined before chucking a video together. Didn't even think of terrestrializing in the TCG. Yeah, like I feel like there's some cool things they could do with it. Make it an item card, switch your type, switch your weakness. Maybe give them an additional effect is something I'd like to see. It's like hey, if you're fire terror type, you do 20 extra damage or something. And if you're water, your attacks cost one colorless energy less or one water energy less. Like things like that, just to make them feel unique and add an extra layer of depth to it. But then have them maybe like radiant cards where it's, you can only have one terror type card in your deck. So it's you apply it to one Pokemon, it changes its type, but like you can only pick to change to one type and you can only do it once a game. Tool that increased healing received would be cool, but maybe annoying. I can see that being really cool. And it would be an interesting way for like control decks to be a bit more viable. Cause right now like we have Mewtwo V Union, which is fine. Um, but yeah, like something that whenever this Pokemon's healed, heal an extra 50 or like double the value of what's healed to it kind of thing. That'd be cool. Because they have done some like healing mechanics, but they just... I don't know, I feel like they get overshadowed a lot of the time because it's just, hey, you can heal, but things are just going to one-shot you, so you can't heal off dead. Like, Serena, it's cool, you heal 20, but all those things are just one-shotting you, you just play Gardevoir over it, because it's, yeah, I can heal 20 off, but if they're knocking me out, it's irrelevant, whereas if I'm taking 20 less damage, I'm not dying, that's a better effect, but things like Chestnut, where we're giving it weak guard energy, we're giving it Cape of Toughness, it's not going to be getting one-shot, the Serena makes sense. Love to run Radiant Serena and Damage Pumps. That's kind of cool, actually. So just move the 20s off. So it's like, hey, he has 110, move 20 here, move 20 here, move 20 here. Serena heals them all off. It does kind of suck that it's not a repeatable action, but I get where your head's at and I like it. Um, we put this down. I'm thinking we just Serena away the grass energy. We get it back with training court. There's no point Serenaing up the Luminion because it's never going to attack into us. They have a bunch of switching cards. We're not going to take a knockout on it unless we're able to fully knock it out, which we're not. Uh, what do we got? Nothing really. Pal pad. We hold. Swing with that for now. Ideally, we get to a point where we have multiple of these, so if they swing with Cramorant, it just dies. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of funny. Damage Pump's sick. Damage Pump and Zoroark Beastar is busted. I love it. 
So around Zoroark Vstar is like a fire deck. So you have Radiant Heatran. You can damage bump to that and just make it do crazy numbers. Like you have Gape Jaw Bog down your first turn, bench a bunch of things, they took 20 damage. Heatran goes down, takes 20, and then the following turn you put down Basin, accelerate a fire energy to the bench to Heatran, takes another 20. And then attach double turbo energy, it's doing 260. You can use damage bump. Move more, scale that damage up further. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. And then just Zora V Star in itself being able to just scale up to crazy amounts of damage. You've also got Thornton, so you can Thornton like Angu Base Note to Heatrans and then Thornton it into a Zoroark instead if you wanted to just start swinging that way. Because you could base in attach fire energy for turn, and then you're not doing reduced damage because of double turbo energy. And you've also got the Moltres from Brilliant Stars to do the same thing. It's a pretty fun deck. I'm thinking it's probably what I'm going to run at Regionals. I guess it's not Regionals, uh, OCIC. Why does he keep using the Skate Bro? Why, why are you like this? Oh, he's getting a knockout. That's why. You know what? Fair. That's a solid play. Okay, so is there any point in like any of this right now? I think we just need to thin our hand down as much as possible. I'd like to be able to get that in the discard, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So we go Ordinary Rod. Um, just do energy. Feels like a waste, but it's just getting it out of our hand. So we can just serene away like everything. Serena, one Gardenia, the Thornton, and the VIP. Thornton, I don't think, is coming up. Like, I guess it could have with that, but that's fine. And I'm just concerned that they run the Radiant Charizard. They come out with Mirage Gate and just blow us up. <laughs> Haven't seen any Fire Energy yet though. Giratina build, so it might not, but we'll see. More likely, I'm thinking they run Grenadia, but we'll find out. Head in a bed, Luke? Fair. Fair. Have a good sleep, buddy. Happy holidays if I don't see you before the new year. Well, I guess it's New Year's tomorrow. Yeah, so I won't be back on until Monday. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for popping on the stream. Hope to see you again, and glad I could teach you something. Oh, thanks very much for the sub, man. That's awesome. Cheers. Alright, how are we looking here? Why can't we find chestnuts? Where's all our chestnuts? Nice. Oh, plus you get the... some shenanigan emotes. Get the little Mimikyu rocking a beer. Give you a cheers before you head off. Is he really gonna try and slap me with a fish? About to happen. So Sableye gets around taking the damage counters just fine because we're only doing 30 right now anyway. Does 12. We swing, we heal 30. Yeah, we got the Pikamuku. Can it get us into another chestnut so we can Gardenia and not waste it? Nope. Oh, okay. Like, I guess we just research this hand away. We finally found one.
if we could find another one, then it would make sense to do the earlier seal stone because it puts the minion down to 100 remaining. Oh no, we need a full. We need all four to do the 120 and swing into it. Okay, uh, we just do that. It gets us out of range. I think healing would have, anyways. Unless they have choice belt. Yeah, they'd have to scoop up net, the goon, choice belt, swing with fish. Looking alright. We're technically ahead in prizes, but we still haven't seen what radiant they're running. No fire energies are revealed yet though, so. Could be safe, we could be safe. Looks like they are trying to set up into the Giratina though. Giratina can get around taking damage counters with Star Requiem. Um, anything worthwhile for Clara? No. I'm thinking we just go Arita, get into Quick Ball. Oh, if. There's chestnuts in the deck, maybe we just get into heavy ball. Um, but yeah, quick ball, pukamuku, get some draw, get some more chestnuts. See if we can get a comeback. Okay, so much for the arena to play. <laughs> maybe we get punished by Roxanne, maybe we get... Oh yeah, a little bit punished, a little bit punished. They're not getting an attack off this turn. I guess they're whiffing finding the Mirage Gate. Alright. Do we gust up the Giratina? Because we could gust up the fish, half hit into the fish. And that takes that out of play from being able to attack, or we go into the Giratina, put some damage into it. I'm almost thinking we just get draw off of Serena though. It's half hitting into it if they go into the V Star, get Mirage Gate. Star Requiem through us. Yeah, we're in a really tight spot then. Yeah, I think this is fine. Please be a chestnut. Nice. Okay. Got all four. Probably won't have all four for long, but... And we got a switch. Okay, so if this doesn't get knocked out, then... Yeah, we likely just try and get Earthen Seal Stone set up onto this one. Put them down to 100. They've still got to take four prizes, which means they have to swing through us at least once. I think we're in the right spot. And yeah, what if they lost owned? A lot of stuff. Alright. I think we're okay here, actually. I mean, Mirage they've only used one Mirage Gate, though. They might have prized some, or they're just getting really unfortunate draws. They are going for the attack with the fish. Oh, or not. 
Oh shit. Okay. Unexpected. So they swing for 280 here. Or I guess they start a Requiem here. Either or. Yeah. That'll do it. Yeah, so I think we just have to put that active. Do that. So we've, we've got the energy to get this off. We just need a means of getting that chestnut back. So if we can get into Clara. hold there. Um, we could do just Radiant Serena to buy some time and then just hope they don't have a Serena or a boss. Because if we don't, they're just knocking us out. Yeah, I think we just do that. At this point, we're just hoping for the best. If they have boss, boss escape rope or Serena, it's game. Because we need... We need that fourth chest knot. Attach this. We're laughing. Then it's, hey, you kill us, but you get killed too. Goes to sudden death. <laughs> Do they not have gust? Oh no. Okay. Um, like we see if we even had a way to play it out. No, we wouldn't have. But yeah, they just lose by decking out. Damn. Have I played Scarlet Violet yet? I have actually. I beat like the Elite Four earlier this week and I'm just doing, um, what's it called? Like the Crater? So it's like the end game content, I guess. Like I've, I beat the, the Elite Four, I beat the Titans, I beat Team Star, and now it's just like, yeah, going into the Crater and there's all the Paradox guys running around. Slowly chipping away. I know I'm, I'm a bit behind. It's been out for a while. It's pretty good though. I wish that they'd uh, taken a bit more time, like optimizing things, because it is fairly choppy and it breaks it a bit. But do I have a favorite new Pokemon? Smallow's pretty sick. I like Smallow. And uh, what's he evolved into? Arbore Arbo Arbolovia? Arboliva? Something like that? It's like an arbor of olives. I like it. I'm really excited to see what they do in the TCG with it because if it is like a new tanky healing guy, that'd be pretty sick. Um, Garganical, also really cool. Like big Minecrafty pyramid man. I like him. The starters, pretty let down by all of them. Really disappointed they didn't make a ghost pepper from uh, Wee Coco, especially since it is fire and ghost type. It, Seems like it go, would go without a question, but they didn't. Just missed opportunity, guys. Missed opportunity. Our believer is a very cool sleeper pick. It is cool, right? I'm a big fan of our believer. Chuck two here. Um, we accelerate the other one here. 
risk is they could go Entei into it and we're in danger. Do we quick ball for the Pukamuku? I don't think we need to. I think we just do this. Get the energy. Call it a day. Might be overcommitting. We'll find out in a second. <laughs> I'm thinking they're more likely to just try and go into this though. Because to get the Entei going, they need to run Fire Energy and Melanie to get that charged up, right? Like they go into the Arceus, they accelerate energy out. This is set up. Set up something else. Like to knock this out now, they'd need what? Boss, Choice Belt, Double Zigzagoon Ping. Imagine putting Diancie in here. Yeah, not a bad shout. I don't know, the deck's already a little tight for space though, and like having Chestnut just sitting in the active to go, like, yeah, hit me. It, it's fine. <laughs> but having Diancie to, yeah, be able to set up with Leafeon, be able to set up with Gardenia. It's not a bad shout. Like, if you ever start it, kind of bust it. I don't hate the idea. I just don't know what we would cut for it. And also here it's like, do we... Do we just gust up the Entei and like bait him? If we top deck a switch, I think that's what we would do. Because we swing into him, we do 130, he swings into us, he takes 90. Doesn't die. No, we don't do that. I guess we should have done the draw supporter first to see what we get. But the idea here is we retreat, haze of grass. We just training court for it back. Um, we've got Gardenias to use it. Interesting. Definitely a situation where I wish we had the Earth and Seal Stone. Yeah, I think we just swing into him. Swing into him, he'll likely go into Ante, swing into us. Might need to bump the Arita count back up. You really like King Gambit, Scavolian, and Grafi Fi. Grafi Fi is pretty cool. I like him. And we already we know that we're getting an EX card of it because they have like an illustration contest for it. So it'll be pretty interesting to see what they do with it. I like that all of the Pokemon in this generation feel very unique. Like Scavolian, also. Cool as hell. It's like hot ones of the Pokemon. Love it. And King Gambit, I still haven't tried out. Like I saw it in, I think the Elite Four, one of them had it. And like, he looks cool. What's he bossing up? Wait, why are you bossing? Okay. Interesting. a lot of energy going on Entei. So even if we attach this, his Entei is doing what? 20 more for each bench. So if he fills his bench, 120, 240, 280, 320, there's no way we don't die from that. We attach this. No, we don't. We should have done this. Got earlier in Seal Stone. Why did I do that? Mistakes have been made. Mistakes have been made. Uh, okay. Ditch this. Hope for the best. <laughs> If 
Duke Muku, get either a switch or a seal stone. Okay, switch is cool. But yeah, this could also work. Did I already use it? I think I gotta have another coffee, guys. I'm playing sloppy. <laughs> Rillaboom feels more consistent? Yeah, I think Rillaboom is more consistent. God. It's just, it started at 9.30, man. <laughs> Aveltal? Okay, so is he gonna quick ball away the Aveltal so that he can... Just get around my chestnut. And then plays that to go Thornton. Seems like a lot of extra steps for not a lot of point. And then here I just gust up the crowbat and if he changes it to a Veltal it dies, right? Like that seems like just bad value. Um attach that here. Like, I'm all for quirky decks, but yeah, change that to a Novelto. I dare you. <laughs> 9.30, what time zone am I in? Judging by the accent, where do you think? No, I'm just kidding. I'm in Australia. Canadian, but I'm living down under. What do you think of the changes they made in cards to the TCG? Um... Like, what kind of changes are you talking about? Because there's a lot of changes coming up. Like, going from Vs to EXs, I'm for it. Going from yellow border to silver border, I don't really care either way. I know a lot of people are excited about silver border. I kind of like yellow border, but it, it like, defines it as, like, yeah, this is a card. Whereas now the silver border, it can kind of muck things up a little bit. It's like, there isn't a defined edge, it feels like. For hollows though, they do look pretty cool, having that reflectiveness. But it also just seems like a way that people will find a way to abuse it. Because like with sleeved cards, I don't know, there'll be ways that if they can just see an edge of it, and now that we have the hollow going right to the edge, I don't know, it, call me paranoid, but someone's gonna find a way to, to cheat the system doing that. Gotta be Europe somewhere? Nah, down under. You feel like the EX cards look a little worse than the Vs? Yeah. Like, not having the... the spillover art, I can see what you're meaning. But I like that it's... it's more contained. Because with the Vs, the difference between the Vs, the alt arts, the full arts, like everything, like looking at this Crobat, like everything's just kind of spilling out. Why is this doing this? Get it here. Yeah, it gets knocked out. It's giving me prizes. Beautiful. Um, but like having the card contained, now when we get cards where it does come out of the artwork, they feel a lot more special and unique. And then when we do see like the alt arts and the full arts, I think they'll have a bit more like a punch to them. Like they'll they'll just feel that much more special pulling them. Uh, do I even do anything here? I think I just swing through it, right? I could... Oh no, I can't even hard retreat out of this. If I gust anything up, does it make a difference? Like I gust that up, put some damage into it, I guess? Because this is just free knockout. I need to take one more prize. 
Yeah, I think I just bring up the one that's not ready. Because then this one, if he swings into me, takes a bunch of damage. If this one swings into me, he dies. Guess we wait for the full arts? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like full arts and like alt arts are just going to be that much. As long as they continue doing them, like we haven't seen anything, but as long as they keep doing them, it'll give them more emphasis. Hope the alt arts stay how they are, because they've been making all amazing alt arts. They've been making amazing alt arts, and the fact that they've been making accessible art arts, I'm getting my tongue tied up, um, is really good. Like the trainer gallery, I feel like is the smartest decision they've made in a while. Like it makes really cool artwork available to everyday players. It's not like $100 cards. They're like five to $10 things. There is still the alt art one. So like people that just want to flex, like, hey, I spent a bunch of money on this, can if they want to. But for people that just want something a little bit different, there is an alternative. Magma Basin, what is this thing? Uh, so he's got an NTV in there. So I think it's in there for that. They were probably also running like Radiant Charizard just as a late game swing. But I think we've kind of mucked up their plan. Start in the Serena. Oh. Like, if we were going second here, at least we could Arita into, um, like, Battle Pass. I'm thinking we just go... Yeah, get rid of this. Get that. Hatch return. We pull this away. Get the leafy on. Accelerate and energy out. We could have switched into it. Just because we're likely to be able to get the attack off. Heals 30. Serena heals another 20 off of it. And like I feel like we're gonna be up against Lost Box. So they're just oh, oh or looted zone. Okay, that's different. But yeah, still would have been a good call having chestnut in play. Um, up against Lunatone and Soul Rock, though, as long as we have three chestnut in play, we bounce back three da or 90 damage counters. So we take a knockout. We knock out one of them. They hit us. They get knocked out. It's fine. Like we take two prizes at a time too. So it's literally just a race of who can take the first knockout. And do they have enough gust to just get around our chestnuts? Well, and can we get chestnuts in play, I guess? Not looking like a great start from them at the moment, though. They've still got a pretty big hand, so it could be some more surprises coming. Down two gust cards and a rescue carrier already. to get into what another soul rock and an attachment for turn and then even then they're doing what 120 so not quite enough to knock us out we just switch out elegant heal research okay cycle draw yeah i think we're in a pretty good way for this especially if we can get into two chestnut literally just need to top deck a energy nice do we have a chestnut in the prizes? Sweet. So next turn we Arita, get Pukamuku, Quick Ball. 
quick ball away the heavy ball to get into another chestnut. So yeah, even anytime they attack us, they get knocked out. Well, anytime they attack a chestnut, they get knocked out. Switch. They haven't used very many scoop up nets. But yeah, that's not even going to be one shotting us. Maybe they just hold off. And scoop up net? I'm thinking. Scoop up net or switch. Scoop up net lets them reuse the Greninja though, so if they have another energy in hand, get some more draw support. Makes me very happy we didn't put training port down to let them use it twice. I think it clicked for him. He's like, oh, I didn't take a knockout, and if I attack again, I get knocked out. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, why not hit that subscribe button so you know when more shenanigans like this is coming out. There should be some more deck lists popping up on the screen right now, so uh, check one of those out. Till next time, though. Take care.